chapter 1771, sealed space, 3. How many times have I told you that this skin is too small for you, who scolded? That demon looked very aggrieved, a piteous expression on that ugly face gave him a weird look that seemed cute but grotesque. Can't I just try it on? No. Who instantly rejected him? She might be wrong, but Yi Kington just felt that Hu was exceptionally protective toward her. Having been reprimanded by Hu, that demon instantly hunkered down obediently. The other fiendish demons couldn't help laughing at the scene. Bah, forget it. Apart from little fiendish demons and the more slender adult ones, no one else can wear that skin. You already know that this is Hu's most beautiful piece of skin. He will kill you if you destroy it. Yi Qingtong's heart stopped as she shot the imperious looking Hu a sideways glance. She was still wondering why Hu appeared exceptionally protective of her. It was actually because he liked her skin. Fiendish demons could shrink their bodies but only to a certain limit. Yi Qingtong was of a slim build and no matter how those tall, strapping demons tried to shrink themselves. It was impossible for them to get down to her small size. Who felt Yi Kington's skin was very beautiful but he couldn't wear it. Nevertheless, he could still admire it while it was on her. He would not allow other demons to destroy that skin. So it was probably because coveted her skin that Who brought Yi Kington back to the eastern camp. For the first time in her life, Yi Kington felt that her skin was really useful. The bunch of fiendish demons hung around for a bit longer before being ordered to go complete their respective tasks. The endless battles during this period meant that they didn't have much time to waste. Yi Kington secretly heaved a sigh of relief, with whose protection, no other demon would dare to take her skin. Otherwise, her identity would be exposed and she would suffer a fate worse than death. The bunch of fiendish demons busied about their own tasks. Meanwhile, the weakling Yi Qingtong mostly spent her time with the little fiendish demons. In contrast to the disdain that the adult demons felt toward her, those little fiendish demons were full of fear and respect for their great sage. Yi Qingtong was about to discreetly discard that piece of demon flesh when there was a sudden tremor near the entrance of the camp. The faces of the little fiendish demons instantly turned grim. What's happening? The little fiendish demons instinctively felt that some kind of danger had arrived, and they huddled together in a trembling ball. Yi Kington glanced up and saw a massive shadow cast over the entrance. A suffocating aura fell upon the entire camp. It's a soul-devouring beast. One of the fiendish demons cried out. The shadow at the entrance of the camp was like a hovering gigantic storm cloud. On closer inspection, no traces of a monster could be seen. That shadow was just one big mass of dark, muddy swirls, inching bit by bit into the camp. All the vegetation in the path of that mass of dark swirls withered and died leaving behind a trail of scorched remains. Yi Kington was stunned by the sight of that huge mass of dark swirls. The soul-devouring beast was an extremely powerful monster. It didn't have a solid body and was just made up of formless muddy swirls. The more powerful a soul-devouring beast was, the bigger the mass of swirls. Chapter 1772, Great General, 1. All living creatures swallowed by the soul-devouring beast would instantly melt into a bloody liquid and become part of the beast itself. In the blink of an eye, all the monsters outside the camp were engulfed by the soul-devouring beast. Within the opaque black swirls, one could see those huge monsters instantly dissolve into mush, leaving behind bare bones. This was a nearly full-grown soul-devouring beast. Its powers had already surpassed that of an emperor level. Like this, the fiendish demon camp was suddenly faced with a great enemy. Since the soul-devouring beast's body was formless and the sharp claws of the fiendish demons were useless against it, this was the most challenging type of monster for the fiendish demons. There shouldn't be any soul-devouring beasts in this area. When did this beast come over here? The demons couldn't help panicking. They seldom encountered soul-devouring beasts in this area and tried their best to stay out its way. How did this thing suddenly appear over here? All fiendish demons are to immediately evacuate from the entrance. The little fiendish demons are to go back into the cave. Whose face was very grim. It was a huge challenge to handle a soul-devouring beast. Some of the more powerful fiendish demons had already started attacking the soul-devouring beast but their sharp claws were totally ineffective against that mighty beast. 
part of the soul-devouring beast had already drifted into the camp and some demons who didn't manage to get out of the way in time were engulfed and instantly dissolved. This was the first time Yi Kington was seeing a soul-devouring beast up close. It was also the first time she had seen such a huge one. This soul-devouring beast was powerful enough to engulf all the fiendish demons here, who had assigned some of the demons to go over and stop the soul-devouring beast from advancing further but the results were negligible. Although the fiendish demons were able to disperse the formless body of the soul-devouring beast with their demon aura, the monster's body would instantly coagulate back again. Just as the body of the soul-devouring beast coagulated once again and it was prepared to move toward a group of demons, a black figure suddenly scurried out from a hill behind the beast. The black figure moved very fast and was impossible to capture. Hovering in midair, the black figure suddenly unleashed a tremendous demon aura. It enveloped the soul-devouring beast, causing it to freeze on the spot and go into spasms. The demon aura covering the soul-devouring beast kept compressing. With a loud roar, the beast made a sound like the loud crashing of ocean waves slamming against the cliffs. But no matter how hard the soul-devouring beast struggled or roared, it was unable to escape the constraints of the demon aura. Its body was slowly being condensed and pulled upward into midair. Suddenly, the huge beast was being sucked right into the black figure. A strong wind gushed by and Yi Kington watched on as the massive soul-devouring beast was quickly being absorbed. If she hadn't seen it with her own eyes, she would have found it hard to believe that there could be anything in this world that could swallow that huge soul-devouring beast. Great General cheers erupted from the fiendish demons. Following those cheers, all the demons in the camp immediately fell to their knees. The great general was the top leader of all of the fiendish demons. Chapter 1773, Great General, 2. Yi Kington was momentarily taken aback before quickly following the example of the other fiendish demons and getting down to her knees. She couldn't help sneaking looks at that black figure hovering in midair. At this point, Yi Kington finally saw what that black figure actually looked like. It was a tall, strapping fiendish demon. Unlike the other demons, his skin was a boiling lava red with faint glowing veins all over. So powerful, that demon was clearly quite a distance away from Yi Kington. But he possessed such an intense aura that she could feel it engulfing her entire body. And the demon was already purposely suppressing his own aura. Yi Kington knew very well that if the fiendish demon didn't hold back his aura, she would already be torn apart. The powerful fiendish demon gradually landed in the camp and the rest of the demons gazed at him with awe and respect. Welcome back, great general. The great general surveyed the crowd of demons, and those dusky eyes shone with a sharp, harsh light. A soul-devouring beast would not appear here without any reason. Go and investigate the cause. His voice was low and he had only spoken a simple sentence. But the effect was enough to make one car and tremble and fear. This was the great general and the most powerful fiendish demon in this camp. Yi Kington was completely awestruck. If she was right, the great general had simply swallowed that soul-devouring beast. That massive soul-devouring beast. The thought made Yi Kington break out in cold sweat. She discreetly shuffled behind a group of demons to hide. It was hard to ascertain whether the great general would be fooled by her disguise. He was too powerful. More powerful than any other demon that Yi Kington had met. Even the Ice King which Yi Kington had encountered when she first entered the mystic realm was not as powerful as this fiendish demon. But the great general's attention was entirely focused on the sudden appearance of that soul-devouring beast. The active territory of the soul-devouring beasts was very far away from their camp. No soul-devouring beast had ever ventured over to their camp before. The appearance of this soul-devouring beast was no coincidence. The various fiendish demon factions enslaved quite a number of monsters. As the battles intensified among the different camps, this soul-devouring beast might have been a war beast enslaved by one of the other enemy factions and unleashed upon them. Demons from an opposing faction had been able to sneak into their territory, anything was possible. The fiendish demons immediately acted on his command. The great general didn't say another word. He just flew into the pitch black cave. After he left, the heavy aura covering the entire camp finally faded away after he left. Some of the little fiendish demons looked very pallid for them. 
the great general's aura was unbearable. The kind of overwhelming and instinctive fear one felt toward a powerful being was a torture to them. Great general is so powerful. One of the little fiendish demons stood up, still trembling. It had nearly fainted from the great general's oppressive aura. Yi Kington secretly heaved a sigh of relief. She had lived for three hundred years in her previous life and knew how to lessen the impact of a powerful aura. Otherwise, she would have suffered even more than these little fiendish demons. Chapter 1774, Great General, 3. Of course the Great General is most powerful. Another little fiendish demon spoke up in a voice full of respect. It is truly a terrifying experience to feel the Great General's power. He can smash me with just one finger. Fear still lingered in the hearts of the bunch of little fiendish demons. It was a rare occasion for them to meet the Great General, as they had just been born. This was actually the first time they were meeting him. Look at how weak you all are. You'd better grow up soon, otherwise, you will just faint dead away when you meet demons from the Heavenly Demon Tribe, the Emperor Demon Tribe and the Earth Demon Tribe, Ba commented disdainfully when he noticed the frightened faces of the little fiendish demons. Are you talking about the three major demon tribes? One of the little fiendish demons asked. Ba nodded. You little punks are in camp all day long. You don't know just how dangerous things are outside. The enemy factions we are battling now are nothing compared to those three major tribes. I think you will be scared to death just by looking at them. Yi Kington's attention was instantly attracted at the mention of those three major tribes. There were countless fiendish demon factions in this mountain valley. Amongst them, there were three of the most powerful camps. They sat right at the top suppressing the rest of the demons like three huge mountains. These three big factions represented absolute power. They were the mightiest tribes amongst the entire fiendish demon population. They were the heavenly demon tribe, the earth demon tribe and the emperor demon tribe. Yi Kington had heard other fiendish demons mention these three tribes, but had never seen a single demon from either of those tribes before. It was rumored that the appearance of the fiendish demons from these tribes was different from the rest. Their abilities were powerful beyond belief. As fierce as the battles were amongst the different demon factions now, just one puff from either one of the major tribes would be enough to shake the entire valley. Demons from the other camps would never dare to provoke the big three tribes. If they happened to chance upon any one of them, they would try their best to avoid and hide. The eastern camp, where Yi Kington was currently situated, was totally insignificant when compared to those three. Having witnessed the ability of the Eastern Camp's great general, Yi Kington found it difficult to imagine just how powerful those three top tribes were. The great general's powers were already beyond her comprehension. How much more terrifying would those three elite tribes be? Yi Kington's scalp tingled just at the thought of it. Nevertheless, the war between the fiendish demons was meaningless to her. If not for her lack of opportunity, she would have already escaped far away. Dot. After several days of investigation, they finally uncovered the origins of that soul-devouring beast. As expected, the appearance of that soul-devouring beast was no coincidence. The beast was the war pet of the Western Great General, and had been specially sent over to the Eastern Camp to cause maximum destruction. The Eastern fiendish demons were jumping with rage when they found out it was a ploy by their arch-nemesis. A huge battle ignited between the two camps rising to a feverish pitch in just half a month. Apart from the little fiendish demons, all other demons, even those weaklings like Yi Kington, had been summoned to the front line of the battle. Chapter 1775, The Battle Between the Top Three, 1. The battle between the fiendish demons was not something that Yi Kington could participate in. Even if she was brought to the battlegrounds, she and a few other weaker demons were positioned at the back to prevent the enemy from sneaking an attack from the behind. The demon wars continued endlessly across the wide valley. The grudge between the eastern and western demons had been brewing for a long time and it felt like they were going to settle it once and for all now. Those western scumbags brought over eight war beasts. Damn them, we will fight them to the death. Bar wiped off the fresh blood from his face and roared at the battlefield before charging straight into it. Yi Kington cast a sweeping glance across the bloody battlefield. Countless demon corpses were strewn across the valley and the thick, 
evil stench permeated the entire area, it was like a scene from hell, the fighting was so intense that the fiendish demons didn't even have time to devour their enemies corpses, countless roars echoed through the valley, Yi Kington could see those 18 gigantic war beasts from afar, they charged about the battlefield in a frenzy, they think they can turn the tables with just a few war beasts. A cold voice suddenly piped up from amongst the fiendish demons. The eastern camp's great general raised his hand and sent out several blasts of demon aura, instantly blowing up those war beasts into pieces. The fiendish demons in the eastern camp roared in jubilation as the blood of the war beasts rained down upon them. The great general has made his attack. Look at those western fools, let's see if they can continue acting so smug. The eastern fiendish demons were all pumped up with adrenaline at the sight of their great general. For this particular battle, not only was Yi Kington brought over, even the little fiendish demons had also tagged along. The fighting between the two factions had risen to a feverish pitch. It seemed that the appearance of the eastern great general triggered a rush of excitement and activity. But a powerful aura suddenly appeared above the battleground. The eastern great general raised his head and saw a black figure charging straight at him. In the next second, an intense rush of black aura was emitted from the eastern great general's body to meet the incoming figure. With an immense boom, powerful shock waves radiated out in all directions. Two figures could be seen standing head to head in midair. On one side was the eastern great general, on the other side was a burly fiendish demon, that is, the great general of the western camp. One of the little fiendish demons beside Yi Kington spoke up in shock at the sight of that other figure. It was the clash between the eastern and western great generals. It was inevitable that it would be a battle to the bitter end. The atmosphere of the entire battleground instantly became very tense the moment those two great generals appeared. It was the first time Yi Kington was witnessing a battle between two elite fiendish demons. Just the shock waves resulting from the clashes between those two was enough to send the other demons on the battlefield flying. At this moment, Yi Kington was secretly rejoicing at the fact that she didn't bring little white tiger and little heavenly demon along with her. The amount of power exchanged as the two great generals fought was far beyond what Yi Kington could ever imagine. But just as both sides were engaged in an intensely fierce battle, the bright clear sounds of a blowing horn echoed through the valley. The tone was low but the ears of every single demon in the valley instantly pricked up, like death's knell. The roar of thunder was so tremendous that their chests felt like it had been blown apart. Chapter 1776, The Battle Between the Top 3, 2 What is that? Several little fiendish demons beside Yi Kington shivered in fear at the sound of the horn. The two great generals also immediately stopped fighting the moment they heard the blaring noise. They appeared apprehensive and looked like they were listening out for something. Hovering in midair, they didn't seem to have any intention of continuing their fight. It's the call of the heavenly demon tribe. The eastern great general's expression shifted. As powerful as he was, he couldn't help shuddering at the sound of that horn. The emperor demon tribe and the earth demon tribe. They also sounded their signals today. The western great general's face was likewise very grim. There were over a dozen fiendish demon camps in this valley. The eastern and western camps had their long-running grudge. The other factions also had their own conflicts. As a result, the battles between the various camps never ceased. But the three top fiendish demon tribes rarely appeared in this part of the mountain valley. They were the heavenly demon tribe the Emperor Demon Tribe and the Earth Demon Tribe. It was not that these three major tribes were peace-loving and benevolent. It was because within this valley, any fiendish demon faction who went against any one of the top three had already been instantly decimated. None of the remaining demon camps would dare to provoke the big three tribes. It was a death wish to go against any one of them. The two great generals exchanged a look and understood what each was thinking. They immediately descended to the ground, back at their own factions. We will postpone the settlement of this grudge between you and I. The appearance of all three major tribes at the same time is something out of the ordinary. I am afraid it means. The deity ocean will be emerging soon. The western great general spoke in a cold voice. The eastern great general also didn't intend to continue fighting. No grudge was more important than the deity ocean. The two demon camps which had been fighting so ferociously just a second earlier, 
immediately dispersed, led by their respective great generals, they headed towards the source of the blaring horns, Yi King Tung followed the crowd of fiendish demons, but her heart was full of uncertainty, we will get to see something exciting later, the congregation of the three top tribes, when else would we get an opportunity like this, Ba murmured to himself as he hurried along, what do you mean? Yi Kington glanced at Ba. What else can I mean? We are nothing to the three big tribes. Have you ever seen any demons from those three in this part of the valley before? The rest of us may be fighting tooth and nail for territory here but the three top tribes don't care for this place at all. They simply can't be bothered about us. Why else do you think we can still conduct our battles here? The truly premium territories in the valley have already been fully occupied by the big three. The corners of Ba's lips curled up in a sneer, nevertheless, his words were still full of awe and respect for the three elite demon tribes. In the eyes of the top three tribes, the rest of the demon factions were just tiny, insignificant squabbling kids, completely not worth their time or attention. The three big demon tribes seldom appear in this part of the valley. Now that all three signals have been sounded, they are summoning all the demons under their camps. Something big must be happening. Ba narrowed his eyes. Apart from the deity ocean, I really cannot imagine what else can trigger all three tribes at the same time, who spoke up in a low voice from the side. Chapter 1777, The Battle Between the Top Three, Three the appearance of all three major demon tribes can only mean one thing the deity ocean. Weren't there rumors that the deity ocean would emerge sometime within these two years, I think? It could be any time now, who said? Yi Kington looked at the large crowds of fiendish demons surging toward the source of those blaring horns. The demons from the eastern and western factions weren't the only ones on the way there. Countless demons from the other camps were also all heading in the same direction. Some of those demons appeared injured, and were very likely in the middle of a battle just now. However, just the sound of those blaring horns of the big three demon tribes were enough to make everyone stop their fighting and head in the same direction. Following the demons, Yi King Tung soon arrived at an opening within the valley, but the entire congregation suddenly stopped right before they entered the opening. The demons standing right at the front took in deep breaths in unison. Yi King Tung was standing right at the back and couldn't see what was happening up front, but she could already feel the suffocating aura that radiated from that opening. Although she was still quite a distance away, that pressurizing aura engulfed Yi King Tung's entire body. Within seconds, her face had turned pallid, she could feel that there was some extremely powerful creature at the front, Yi King Tung didn't even dare to reach out her senses to probe, instinct told her that whatever creature it was, it was definitely not something she could afford to provoke, Yi King Tung was not the only one, the little fiendish demons were also in agony, even their breathing had become extremely labored, several roads led to this opening and fiendish demons from all the various factions had all gathered here, but none of them dared to step into the opening, their faces were full of anxious trepidation, Ba squeezed to the front of the crowd, dragging Yi King Tung and Hu along, at this point, Yi King Tung finally saw what was beyond the opening, tens of thousands of fiendish demons were gathered there, all lined up into three neat factions, every single one of them possessed a powerful and intense aura, each demon was also riding upon a ferocious war beast, amongst them, the presence of three massive beasts stood out, sky-raising giant pythons. Ba couldn't help shuddering as he gazed at those massive pythons. Hundreds of meters long and over a dozen meters wide, the pythons were also clad in black armored scales. The sky-raising giant python was an exceptionally ferocious beast. It had thick skin, tough flesh, lightning speed and was covered in venom all over. Fiendish demons were immune to most venoms. The types of poisons used by humans were like candy to the demons. But fiendish demons had zero immunity toward the venom of a sky-raising giant python. On top of that, this beast loved to eat fiendish demons and often hunted them as prey. Even the more powerful fiendish demons would go out of their way to avoid sky-raising giant pythons. But right now, Standing upon the head of one of those sky-raising giant pythons was a skinny, hunchbacked fiendish demon. Chapter 1778, First Move, 1. 
The demon's face was very ugly and had a pair of horns growing out of his forehead. He looked exactly like your typical evil demon and was slightly smaller in size than Yi King Tung. Hands clasped behind his back, he stood on top of a sky-raising giant python, which was completely docile beneath his feet. That's the great general of the earth demon tribe. Ba shivered controllably when he noticed that ugly horned demon. The demons of the earth demon tribe all had horns growing out of their foreheads. It was a symbol of their strength. Countless fiendish demons patrolled around the sky raising giant python. All of them indeed possessed long sharp horns on their foreheads. Yi Kington's eyes were full of wonder as she looked at them. This was the first time in her life she had seen demons with horns on their heads. The great general of the earth demon tribe is indeed powerful. He can make an adult sky raising giant python his steed. Ba swallowed hard. As arrogant as Ba was, he couldn't suppress the fear and awe he felt at the sight of that great general, sky-raising giant python. Look at the steed of the heavenly demon tribe's great general, who lifted his chin with arms still crossed. Ba glanced over and gasped. A massive flaming ape was standing amongst the demons. That huge ape was very muscular with skin as tough as rock. Swirls of burning lava flowed upon its skin, circling its entire body. Meanwhile, the flaming ape was holding a tall, slender demon with grayish white skin in the palm of its hand. That fiendish demon didn't look that different from the other demons, but his malevolent face somehow exuded a serene vibe. Aside from the heavenly demon tribe's flaming ape and the earth demon tribe's sky-raising giant python, the steed of the emperor demon tribe's great general was also very exceptional. It was a three-headed wind snake that could hover in midair, ice blue in color, it looked different from the other wind snakes as it was probably a mutated version. The tremendous power of the three major demon tribes were on full display. Just the sight of those three steeds was enough to make the other demon camps tremble in fear. All of those steeds were notorious beasts feared by all fiendish demons. Any one of them could easily destroy thousands of demons. But at this point, those massive beasts were subservient to the three great generals. The disparity in strength was astounding. Yi Kington looked at the three great generals. Even though she was some distance away, she could already feel their powerful aura. She subconsciously turned toward the eastern great general. That mighty fiendish demon, which previously had Yi Kington quivering in fear, looked uncharacteristically wary after seeing the three major tribes. Yi Kington noticed that the Eastern Great General wasn't the only one. The other Great Generals had also gathered here but none of them dared to step into the territory of the Big Three. They all maintained a respectful distance. By now, all the fiendish demons had now gathered. But the Great Generals of the Elite Tribes seemed to be oblivious to the fact that their horn signals had summoned all the demons from the other camps. They only observed the presence of their other two major counterparts as if the demons from the rest of the camps were not even worth a sideways glance. Don't tell me. The deity ocean is really going to appear now? Ba asked quietly. The gathering of the three top tribes, added to the fact that they had summoned all the demons under them, such a grand gesture meant that something significant was about to happen. Yi Kington couldn't help frowning. She had learned about the existence of the deity ocean from other fiendish demons. She also knew the huge attraction it had to all fiendish demons. Chapter 1779 First Move, 2 If Ba had guessed correctly, the appearance of the three major tribes was connected to the deity ocean. The other demon camps must have also realized this and so had all gathered here at the sound of their horn signals. So many have gathered here today. The great general of the earth demon tribe crossed his arms behind his back. Those murky eyes swept across the sea of demons, a chilly glint surfacing in his pupils. All the fiendish demons who caught his gaze couldn't help shuddering. Greetings great generals. We have not seen you three for a long time. We specially came after hearing the horn signals. One of the great generals from the other camps stepped forward with an amiable smile. He spoke very carefully. H. -M -P -H. 
The earth demon tribe's great general snorted before turning away. He had no regard at all for the other demons. He had been addressing the heavenly demon tribe and the emperor demon tribe only. The great general who spoke up broke out in cold sweat after being dismissed by the earth demon tribe's great general. In all other situations, they would be giving wide berth to these three top tribes if they happened to encounter them. But as the deity ocean was at stake, even those subpar camps couldn't help feeling drawn to this place. A legend passed down over tens of thousands of years, the desire to be the king of demons, this was enough to trigger the ambitions of any fiendish demon. The great generals from the three top tribes clearly had no regard for the other camps. They just stood there quietly, as if waiting for a particular time. The demons from the other camps were naturally terrified. But seeing that the three main tribes appeared to be waiting for something, they also followed suit. What are they doing? Bar was feeling uncertain, who replied in a low voice, the great generals of the three big tribes are all standing here without any movement, they must be waiting for something to happen. Didn't you see all the demons who have gathered here? I am pretty sure the deity ocean will be making an appearance. The big three have a better understanding of the deity ocean than the rest of us. Then, is the great general preparing to make a move for the deity ocean? Bar whispered discreetly. So many great generals were gathered here with no intention to leave. Could all of them be plotting to snatch the deity ocean right from under the noses of those three main tribes? Make a guess. Who shot Bar? Look. Anyone who manages to obtain the deity ocean will become king. Which great general would let such an opportunity slip by? Aren't they afraid that the top three tribes will clear them out? Clear them out? Who is going to do it? The other two tribes will be the ones to benefit. Anyway. Do you think they are bothered by us at all? Who sneered? Bar quietened down and glanced at their own great general. As expected. His sharp eyes were fixed upon the three top tribes. Yi King Tung's heart sank on hearing the conversation between Ba and Hu. Previously, she had already felt that something was not quite right. But now, her suspicions had been confirmed. The Eastern Great General was determined to snatch that deity ocean away. But could it be that simple to snatch the deity ocean? Yi King Tung surveyed the sea of demons. There were countless fiendish demons here and they all had the same goal, to snatch that deity ocean for themselves. The number of demons gathered here was already mind-boggling. On top of that, the power exuded by those top three tribes was enough to make one's scalp go numb. Wasn't it a death wish to try and fight the big three for the deity ocean? Chapter 1780 First Move, 3 It was a gamble with the chances of winning less than one out of a hundred thousand. Yi King Tung felt that these fiendish demons had all gone mad. Although she had yet to see the three major tribes make a move, Yi King Tung could clearly feel the immense power they exuded. Moreover, they also had the upper hand in terms of numbers. The moment the trigger was pulled, it would be total Armageddon. Great Sage, what is this deity ocean? One of the little fiendish demons tugged at the corner of Yi King Tung's sleeve. The little fiendish demons seldom ventured out of the camp and didn't know much of the wide world beyond. Yi King Tung couldn't help furrowing her brows slightly as she looked at the group of little fiendish demons who had been tagging along by her side daily. All the fiendish demons from every camp would be fighting to the death for the deity ocean. Even these little fiendish demons would be dragged into the frenzy. Yi Kington had not been at the eastern camp for long and she seldom left the campsite due to her weak powers. She spent most of her time hanging around the entrance of the cave. Perhaps because of Yi Kington's gentle character, the little fiendish demons were exceptionally close to her and they trailed after her all day long. Meanwhile, Although the other adult demons scorned Yi Kington for her weak abilities, they would always include her share when distributing the spoils of war. It was impossible not to grow fond of them. Yi Kington could already predict how dear the consequences of the fight for the deity ocean would be. If possible, she didn't want to participate in this suicidal battle. She didn't want the East and demons to join in either. But what could she do? Yi King Tung's heart sank a little as she watched the raging ambition concealed within the Eastern Great General's heart. Great General, the little fiendish demons look rather ill. Why don't we send them back first? 
Yi Qingtong tried to speak up. The Eastern Great General didn't even turn his head. No one is allowed to leave from this moment on. It was a command that sentenced everyone to death. It was clear that the Eastern Great General was prepared to go all out for the deity ocean. Even the little fiendish demons would be a source of power during the great battle. Every little bit counted in the fight for the deity ocean. Yi Qingtong's heart sank further. Watching those naive little fiendish demons and then at the now familiar faces of Ba and Hu, Yi Qingtong really didn't want to see them sent to their deaths. But the great general had the final say in everything. Yi Qingtong could speak till her saliva ran dry and nothing would change. Time passed very slowly, the three major tribes remained unmoving, and the other camps had no choice but to wait at the side. All the fiendish demons were waiting for that moment, that one moment which had been immortalized in the legends. Time drifted on. Day turned to night before turning to day again. The sea of demons in the mountain valley remained exactly where they were. An unprecedented sense of peace and quiet descended over the valley. A strong gust of wind suddenly blew by. The whistling air shattering the calm of the night. The murky eyes of the earth demon tribe's great general had been closed but they were now wide open. Narrowing them, he gazed up into the empty sky, a sharp glint in his pupils. It's here, under the howling winds and shaking earth. A great fog swirled above the heads of the three elite tribes. A bizarre ancient chanting seemed to echo down from the heavens. The chanting was faint and could barely be heard above the raging winds. In the next second, a powerful beam of light shone down from the sky onto an empty space in midair. As if something was being split open, a chasm appeared right at that highlighted spot. 